Levi Lassick. I'm here with my business partner, Travis Plum. Uh, so this room today is about YouTube. We're gonna talk a little bit about YouTube. And you know, of course, this is all informal and uh, I'll give you a brief introduction on, on what we've done and then we can and, uh, let the other speakers as well. And so we have a channel in Dallas, Texas. Has anybody ever seen that? Or, yep. Okay, cool, a couple of you. So uh, we just passed 23,000 subscribers. We started that channel in December of 2020 was the first video that came out. So the short story is it took about 90 days to get that first deal under contract, but uh, we ended up closing the first two transactions in April of 2021. And then from there in the last nine months of 2021, it completely compounded to where we closed 64 transactions, uh, 33 and a half million in volume from the channel in that first year. And then last year in 2022, we ended up closing about 86.2 million in volume, 154 transactions from the channel. This year, we've just hit close to 20 million, so a little bit off of a slower start, but we know how the market is a little bit interesting, right? But I would say that the content has been very instrumental in keeping our business consistent because I do know the one thing is that people are out there buying and selling homes every single day and those are the people we wanna find. So if we have the content out there that's going to reach them, then we're likely going to attract the people that are looking to buy or sell because we know people are moving regardless. So I know there's a lot of negativity out there on YouTube, you open up your home page and every thumbnail has fire and, and homes underwater and the market's crashing, but still people are, are uh, contracting every day. I think since Thursday we contracted on seven homes uh, just from the channel. So those opportunities are coming up more and more. And so it's just something that I'm sure many of you have you know, seen the story. Anybody familiar with uh, the book, Passive Prospecting? Did you know that came out? Yes, a few of you? Awesome. Yeah. So we do have a book, a number one Amazon bestseller as well on passive prospecting. And it just came out on Audible yesterday as well. So yeah, for, for all you auditory people that like to listen. Yeah, and the good thing about YouTube is that it's a, it's a slow growing process. So you're not gonna put out a video and probably get 10 calls the next day. You have to build that process overnight. And with that, that does allow you time as well to start to build out your systems, processes, and your people. And that's something you wanna be mindful of. Now, I've never edited a single video in my life. And I think that's a lot of people's misconception as well is that to get onto YouTube, you have to be the creator or you have to be the editor, more or less. I mean, you are the creator, but you know the information. Uh, you know the information. If I went to your neighborhood right now with you to buy a house, you could have a conversation with me, hopefully, as an experienced agent, right? If I asked you questions about the neighborhood and going around there, if we were riding in the car or walking down the street, you would be able to have a normal conversation with me. You wouldn't need a script, likely, right? You would have a conversation. So I think for me, it was really getting comfortable having a conversation with the camera because the camera is an inanimate object. And I was always used to belly to belly, you know, seeing people's head shake and uh, they interrupt you or ask you questions or gestures, things like that. So whenever you're talking to a camera, there's no feedback. You're just staring at a lens. And so the more you can practice that, and we all know that repetition is what will you know, get us through those types of situations, just like getting your real estate license. You know, When everybody got their real estate license, you got a stack of books, it was a lot of information. You're like, do I really need to know the square footage of an acre? You know, Am I really gonna use that? Uh, and then you have to take this test and it seems very overwhelming, but the next thing you know, you've got a license. And then when you go to write your first contract, it's 25 pages, you gotta attach seven addendums, and that's overwhelming at the same time. But then you work through it and you probably write a contract in your sleep right now. So I think getting on camera is just uh, something that is always gonna be a little bit awkward at first, but you want to work on having that conversation with the camera because that's what's gonna make the connection with the viewer on the other side. And you do this every single day in your business with clients. The only difference is, is that when you go home at the end of the day, that conversation has lived and died with that one person. It's not scalable, it's not duplicatable. So whenever you have that conversation, that exact same conversation, and if you're struggling with what content to make, think about the day you just went through with a client. You took them around a neighborhood, you talked about the homes, you talked about the community, you talked about everything that's happening there. If you could just go home at the end of that day and recreate that conversation on the camera, now you're, you're getting the opportunity to reach 10, 100, 1,000, maybe 10,000 people with that exact same conversation. And the more you can make it conversational, I think is also gonna help 
with the connection a lot better. Yeah, I think a good, a good term for that is incorporate, don't dedicate. So if you incorporate those types of things in the videos, I mean, you can sprinkle it in, but dedicating directly to it, if you do a, a broad range of topics, it's gonna be very difficult to niche down. And what we're talking about is very specific market channels. You know, it's a very, you know, it's a very specific. And so uh, the thing is, is that if you broaden yourself out there, it, it makes it a lot more difficult for the audience to identify you. But also, you know, personal things, uh, if you incorporate that, it's different than dedicating. I don't think as a, as a Dallas real estate agent, nobody knew who we were, right? So nobody's really interested in our personal lives to, to make full-on videos. Now, if you're Ryan Serhant, maybe people are interested in like your, your day on the weekend, right? Some people want to know that because all they see is the business side or something like that. So you have to have that national audience. And is, if, you're, uh, if anybody actually want to do an experiment, does anybody have their phone? Does everybody have YouTube? So if you search Living in Dallas, Texas on YouTube and you pull up our channel, I'd be happy to have you as a subscriber. I, I want a real estate agent as well because I'd be happy to be a referral partner with you. So if you've got anybody moving to, over to Dallas, then you know, check it out. And we've had people that have studied our channel and been able to just build that on their own in their market. So it's a great way to learn, but at the same time, we get referrals all the time from across the country from agents because of our channel. So it's not just helping clients as well, at least in our opinion. I think that's a great way to network with other agents too. And this lady over here, she kept throwing her hand up like 10 times. Can you guys repeat their questions too? You almost The question, the question is real estate versus, are you talking about like EXP? Uh, oh, personal, is it a personal brand? Like, yeah, so, yeah, I think, I think that's what Jackson was just talking about. So, and I know they have separate channels for agent attraction, like we have a separate channel for agent attraction, same thing. If somebody, you know, if a client, actually we don't really want our real estate clients knowing about agent attraction and we're building a business and we help other agents and that's, we don't want to mix that audience. So we keep that separate. So yeah, if you're building a personal brand, I think that's a lot different and it's a lot harder because you got to think about this, just as uh, Jackson mentioned about search terms, you know, if you're building a personal brand, depending on your reach and who knows you, you're going to have to find people that directly relate to you. You know, if you have a channel that's based off of your, your market, People may be interested in the market information, they may not be interested in you, but if the information is good and the content is good, they'll start to develop a relationship with you over time. And so they may come for the information by default and they may still do business with you just because you end up providing them so much value. And we know this, we know this is the case, right? Because anybody uh, ever gets sucked, sucked into watching Housewives, even though you don't want to admit it? You know, like the spouse watches it, and then each week you walk by and you're like, oh, that's stupid. I would never watch that. It's so petty. And then the next thing, next week you're sitting down, you're like eating some lunch, and you watch a little bit. And then the third week you're like, hey, when's that housewife show coming on? Uh, and then you're like, oh, I like Kyle. You know, Kyle, he's kind of a cool guy. I'll, I'll watch because of Kyle. And then you're going, wait, when does is, when is the next season start? So you get sucked in. So even though you may not like the people initially, if the content is good or if it's interesting and you keep people there, and so if it's a personal brand, you really have to attract the people that are going to only relate to you. So I think incorporating real estate in, on top of that is it's a much broader reach. It could be a little bit more difficult. And also to add to the uh, funnel, if you want to complete that portion of it, the number one click link on our channel is, would anybody have a guess where that number one click link is to get into our funnel? Huh? A free guide. Free guide? No. Book a call. Book a call. Yeah. Well, you're cheating. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's on the channel banner. So up there at the very top, the channel art. That's the number one clicked link where we have a link to schedule a Zoom call with us. That takes them to a landing page to where they can uh, fill out a survey if they want to buy or if they want to sell. And that's the number one. We have that same link in our description, but we have it by a different link so we can tell the difference on the two links. Uh, which, uh, which one gets the most clicks. So the one in the banner gets far more, and this is where we see time and time again, a lot of agents will use that space to link all their social medias, which are all short form, right? Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. You can put five links up there, 
So one, one thing, if you have all your socials up there, that's decision, indecision, right? Because people don't, are not sure where to go. And then you're distracting them, right? You're taking them to a short form platform where they're probably gonna end up watching cat videos anyways. They're not gonna watch real estate. You know, I think about short form content as uh, just going through the motions. I know for me, at the end of the day, if I wanna kill some time or just get my mind off of completely everything, that's where I go to just mindlessly scroll. That's what they call it, right? But the people on YouTube are extremely intentional. Think about it, they have to start typing in a search bar to probably find the, the video that they wanna watch. And so the view durations, all of that is up there, but if you wanna funnel people where you want them to go, don't distract them. Don't link all your socials everywhere else. And that channel banner, you'd be surprised. That's very, very powerful. So that link up there is where we get the most leads from. Yeah, remember, remember you get what you pay for as well. So if you go on, on Fiverr, I mean, I've seen videos, you can get a video edited for like 20 bucks. But again, you're gonna deal with time zones, language barriers, and probably not good quality. Plus none of them, not a single one of them know SEO or optimization through YouTube. So you're still gonna have to deal with that aspect of it. And, uh, but one thing you could do if you really wanna stay at the extremely lowest budget possible is you could pick five of them and send out the same video clips to five different ones, see who gives you one the best back. Uh, Spear Rocket you could go through, but they have, I believe they have a $1,000 a month retainer because we use them on some other VA. So it would be 1,000 a month plus, um, plus the cost of the VA. But I do have some good news as well. If you write down, actually, if you write this down, write down exp.passiveprospecting.com, uh, which will also be exp.passiveproductions.com. So exp has partnered with Passive Prospecting so that you can not only get the training, but then also go through uh, editing as well. So you have access to editors, and they do know everything. They know how to edit. They know how to do thumbnails, tags, titles, descriptions. It's a turnkey service. So, I think you need to find uh, a time on your calendar that you can dedicate th to that. So it could be, I don't know, it's Tuesday afternoons, a busy afternoon for real estate agents. I'm not sure, it wasn't really that busy for us. So it's like Tuesday afternoons, if I'm gonna block out four hours to create some content that needs to be blocked out on my schedule. What is in your calendar you'll likely prioritize? And the thing is, is that you have to be able to say no sometimes as well. So if a client reaches out to you and they're like, hey, you know, I wanna see a house on Tuesday, you know, you have, a, you have a decision to make. You can either say, okay, well look, I've already got an appointment. I wouldn't say, well, I can't meet with you because I'm filming content. I wouldn't say that, right? But I would say, hey, I've already got another appointment at that time. Could we meet Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning? So you can see if you can try to reschedule if something is coming up in your time that you blocked out. But otherwise, what you block out, what you dedicate towards, or maybe it has to be on a weekend, or you think about if you're gonna go out and show homes for the day and you're out in a neighborhood and once they leave, what would happen if you just stayed an extra hour or two maybe in that neighborhood to film that neighborhood while you're already there, especially if you have to drive somewhere that's 30 minutes away and maybe you work that area, but you try, you know, you don't want to make a special trip. So if you're at an open house, a lot of times agents don't like to do open houses. They, they feel like it's a time waster, but they do that because they know there's business. Well, if there's any slow time in that open house, you could make content in the kitchen, you can make content in the in the bedroom, you can make, well, that sounded weird. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, I'll just leave it at that, you understand, but it, if you're really struggling to find the time, but here's what I will say, it's, it's the one thing that will give you your time back. If I offered you, if I said, could you give me 30 minutes and I'll give you 12,000 hours back with your family, would you do that trade? Yeah, so that's what we talk about. 30 minutes, it took 30 minutes to make one, one video, it was watched 12,000 hours. That's almost equivalent to a year and a half worth of prospecting. So if you're dedicating two hours every single day to make calls or to prospect or do something else, why not dedicate an hour a week or two hours a week to making video? It will actually give you your time back. If I asked everybody in here, could you list five pros and five cons about your city? Say yes. Yeah. So if you think about that, you list that out, really all you're doing is talking about each one of those points, let's say two to three minutes. If it's three minutes, you've got 15 minutes on your pros, you've got 15 minutes on your cons. So you're not going to just talk continuously. Mo I mean, most people can't do that. There some real estate agents, I'm sure you've met a few that can talk you know, without ever taking a breath, but if you just uh, bullet point your points out, five on each side, Talk about one, if I asked you about weather or traffic or crime or something like that in your area, you could probably give me a two to three minute snippet on that. 
So that's all you're doing. Just make sure you have a start and an end point on there so that way your editor, if, if you're subbing out for editing, they can piece that together because once you piece that together, you've got a 30 minute video. And the next thing you know, hey, I, I, I didn't feel like I recorded a 30 minute video. I just recorded a, you know, five, three minute talking points and it got pieced together. So the magic really happens in the editing and that's what brings it together. So you don't have to do that in just one long continuous breath. Now I want to I go back to the teleprompter real quick. I, I actually think the worst part of the teleprompter is writing it out. I mean, because then, then you become a copywriter. You become a, a blogger, really, is what you're doing. And if that's not your specialty, I think that, to me, is the most difficult part. Because you could read through a, a teleprompter and look, I mean, look natural. You have to practice it, but you have to practice the same thing as having a conversation with the camera. So I, I never really wanted to even spend the time trying to write that out. I'm not a writer in the first place. So that's a problem. But I think if you, yeah, stick to the bullet points, that you should hopefully know your market enough to be able to bullet point some things out. And if I asked you again in a car and you were showing me homes, hopefully you'd be able to talk for at least two or three minutes on if I asked you about certain subjects or areas or things happening in the city. So just, you have to put yourself in that position. What would I do if that camera is your client? That is your next client. And so you have to look at that lens. It's almost like an eyeball to me. Or whenever I'm looking at this, I'm like, it's Mickey Mouse. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here talking to Mickey Mouse. So that's who I'm having a conversation with. And that's just helps. I mean, it almost looks like a face, right? It's like two eyes and a nose. So I'm having a conversation with the camera. Yeah, and I'm explaining to it. So if I'm holding that phone out in a neighborhood, I'm walking them through almost as if you're walking right next to me. So if you just put yourself and pretend like this is your next client and you're walking him through the area, hopefully that makes it easier. Yeah, and if you, if you missed it, what he, what he said was changes one thing. So if you're going to A-B test, you need to stick to one specific thing. If you're gonna do a thumbnail, pick one specific thing on the thumbnail to change. If you're gonna do a title, you flip-flop a couple of words and you only test the title. So you have to do, because uh, it'll allow you, if you use something like TubeBuddy, it's gonna allow you, you could test, A-B test every single thing, but how will you really understand which one is working. So start with thumbnail. We usually do thumbnails first uh, because that's what gets clicked, right? If you don't get the click in the first place, then you're likely not gonna get the view. So yeah, I mean, you could test it out, but it's definitely a little bit more advanced, but at the same time, work on getting comfortable and, and making good content. So, oh, ads. I mean, for us, we, we disable ads in the middle of the video. So mid-roll, we turn those off so that if they start watching a the video, they watch it all the way through. If you Turn on on the front and the back. Uh, we do that because if you, if you turn that off, YouTube's gonna play ads anyways, regardless, unless you, play, unless you pay for premium. So, you know, we make a little bit of ad spend on the front, but again, we're monetizing real estate, so the ad, the ad revenue is not a motivating factor for us. Is it, is it